several years ago when I started to make my coats and things with stars and circles on them, I found AccuQuilt. Now AccuQuilt is marketed primarily to quilters, but I use it primarily in garment making. I started out with the baby, I think it's called a me now, and then I invested in one of the studios. I do sewing um, for other people and in denim and other things for myself. And I do a lot of necklines, something like this, where you have the band and then you stitch it in. Now this is a knit so it doesn't have the strip on the bias. When I use a woven, I need to have the strip on the bias in order for it to lay flat. And I have an alto quilt cut and rotary cutters, but I'm doing it in large enough volume where it makes sense to me to make strips. So this is a one and a half inch strip. So I don't know if you can see it right here, but it has a foam mat with blades on it. And when you push it through the machine, it compresses it. You have to put it on a tray and have the plastic. It compresses the fabric against the tray and it cuts it into strips. So I'm going to put it on this. I think this is a super giant tray. I have a couple of these strip cutters. So we all know that the salvage is the warp. And the weft and right is the weft. Weft and right, get it? I think I'm funny. And then the bias is a 45 degree angle. So we know that we can do a 45 degree angle on our fabric by folding selvage to the cut side. So I didn't cut this neatly, but this is torn. So I'm going to assume that this cotton lawn is nice and neat. So I have to straighten it out. So it's a little bit longer wide than it is tall, but that's okay. We're just making bias strips. And I make quite a few at a time because I'm generally making quite a few at a time. So I have to get this flat. And one of the things to realize is that while fabric won't stretch on the warp or the weft, oh, okay, so this is a woven and it does have a little bit of movement. It's not really supposed to. But when you do something on the bias, you get a lot of stretch out of it. Well, we don't want to stretch out our bias strips before we make them. So I do a lot of finding where it is. This is a bigger piece than I should have used. But I pat on it because that makes it go. So this would be my bias strip in this direction. So here's my thing right here. So I'm going to flip this and line it up. And I want to be cautious that I'm not making. So this has a limit, this board. So right here is where it ends. So I'm only going to go to here. This is, if, if this was something like a chiffon or a, a, a silk charmeuse or something that has a lot more drape to it, I would have to fiddle with it a lot more to make sure that I'm not stretching out my bias before I get there. So then I take, so this is my cut edge. My selvage is underneath. I folded the selvage to the cut end. And then I put this resulting diagonal on my tray. So now I'm going to line this up. And, you know, you can make it as close as you can. To me, it's more important to have perfect strips. Got a fold under here. So I can pull in this direction or this direction 
to straighten it. But I don't want to pull this way because this is my bias strip. This cotton lawn is very lightweight, so I can do a bunch at a time. I'm always making sure that I'm not stretching my bias. So I don't have to, this is going to be a piece that maybe I don't need. And I can have this going off the edge, although if I fold this I can get some longer strips out of here. I'm just making sure that I've got it closer Put this on here, and then I have to get my quilt machine here. <clears throat> you have to get it started under here, and then you know it's super easy to roll, very comfortable. I mean, you know, I'm getting a little bit, but I'm not, it's not difficult. It's just, you know, you're making sure that it gets all the way through. So when it's all the way through, I'm going to take this off. And I have wonderful, beautiful, perfect inch and a half inch, inch and a half. So this is no good because this was on the end. Sometimes get just a touch where I was off the edge or it sticks a tiny bit in one of the cracks. So this is for something else. But I have perfect one and a half inch bias strips and cotton lawn, as many as I will need for a while. Now you can also use denim or other recycled materials. You just have to find where your weft and warp is. So this is the bottom of a skirt that I hemmed, and it's a chiffon or something. So I have to determine where my warp and weft is. That's not it. When it resists stretching. Okay. So I would say, I can't really tell whether this is my warp or my weft. So if this right here is one of the ones that I want, then that means directly this is one of the ones where you have to be cautious because you can't stretch it. Okay, so I'm finding where it doesn't stretch. So it doesn't stretch this way, it doesn't stretch this way. So that means my bias is this way. So that's pretty good. So this shouldn't stretch and it doesn't. This shouldn't stretch and it doesn't. 
that's how we know that we have 45 degrees. And if I wasn't sitting here with you and fiddling, I'd try and get more. But we can just make a few. And I have, I didn't make sure that I didn't put it off the edge here, so I have run into the end where it went off. So these are perfect width on the bias for using whatever binding that I need them for. I hope that helped.